everyone in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation so we have sine x plus cosine x equals square root of 2 and we're going to be solving for x values and at the end I'm going to show you a graph I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one so for my first method I'm going to do the following First of all, if you study trigonometry and if you know about, you know, maximum or minimum of a function, you probably seen something like this. A sine x plus B cosine x. The maximum value for this function expression is square root of A squared plus B squared. And the minimum is the opposite of this. So it's always going to take values between those two numbers. But let's leave it aside and solve this problem so I'm going to multiply this expression and you're gonna see why in a little bit by square root of 2 over 2 and when I multiply on the right hand side this becomes 1 because root 2 times root 2 and I'm gonna distribute this sine x times root 2 over 2 plus cosine x times root 2 over 2 equals 1 awesome now the goal is to turn this into sine of a sum or the cosine of a sum so I'm gonna go ahead and replace this with cosine of pi over 4 and this with sine pi over 4 all right let's do it sine x cosine pi over 4 Now, if you look at the left-hand side carefully, you're going to notice that it follows the pattern sine alpha cosine beta plus sine beta cosine alpha. Of course, you can switch the sine and cosine here. And this is equivalent to sine alpha plus beta. So, this is equivalent to sine x plus pi over 4 equals 1. Now you're thinking, sine of which angle is 1? The answer is pi over 2, right? So this one on the unit circle. But you can also add multiples of 2 pi. So x plus pi over 4 is pi over 2 plus 2n pi, which is even multiples of pi. Okay? Let's go ahead and separate pi over 4. We're going to get pi over 4 plus 2n pi pi from here now if you go ahead and replace n with integers and could be you know negative 2 negative 1 0 1 to all the integers positive and negative and 0 so you're gonna get all the values for example and I'll show you a graph at the end which will kind of verify this if n is 0 you get pi over 4 if n is 1 you get 9 pi over 4 if n is negative 1, you get pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4, which is negative 7 pi over 4, and so on and so forth. So there are infinitely many solutions. Make sense? Okay. So that is the first method, and let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. The original equation. Now, so my second approach is squaring both sides. And that's okay to do as long as you eliminate or clean up extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are solutions that do not satisfy the original equation, but they just come up uh, because of squaring both sides. So, for example, if I had an equation like this, a different one, and squared both sides, I would end up with the same results. So, some of these solutions are not going to count. Okay? So, let's forget about this. And actually, let's clean it up. Square both sides. So, when we square both sides, we get sine squared x plus 2 sine x cosine x plus cosine squared x equals 2. 
Now remember, one of the most important identities, maybe the most important identity, is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So this is 1 plus, and what does that look like? If you study double angles and trigonometry, this is sine of 2x, and this is equal to 2. Subtract 1, you get the following again. The sine of which angle is 1? The answer is pi over 2. So let's go ahead and replace 2x with pi over 2. And then we have to add multiples of 2 pi or even multiples of pi. If you want, you can use a different variable. doesn't matter. It's just a dummy variable. Now, at this point, because we're trying to solve for x, we'll divide both sides by 2. Let's do it and then plus k pi. Now, k is an integer, positive and negative, so let's replace k with some values, such as if k is 0, x is going to be... Uh-oh. If k is 0, I don't know why Desmos do, do this sometimes. x equals pi over 4. If k is 1, x equals 5 pi over 4. If k is 2, then x is... 9 pi over 4. If k is negative 1, then x is negative 3 pi over 4, and so on and so forth. Let's use negative 2 as well. That's going to give us negative 7 pi over 4. Now, if you look at the original problem, I mean the first method, that's what I mean, you're going to notice that uh, we're not getting all these solutions. So pi over 4, and then we jump to 9 pi over 4. So this is actually an invalid solution. And you could easily check that because if you look at the original problem, you're going to notice 5 pi over 4 does not satisfy. Therefore, the solutions are given by this equation, pi over 4 plus 2 and pi. Okay? That's the right way to solve it. The others are extraneous. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. So basically, the idea here is we introduce extraneous solutions. We have to clean up. For example, negative um, 3 pi over 4 doesn't work in the original equation either. Because if you find the sine and cosine, you're going to notice it doesn't satisfy the original equation. And here's the graph of sine x plus cosine x, which is actually, by the way, uh, similar to sine and cosine graph because it's just a multiple of that. And... The intersection points, obviously, they're infinitely many, but you can see pi over 4 here and negative 7 pi over 4 here as an example. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. I uh, apologize uh, because I kind of lost my voice again. Every year that happens. Bye-bye.